Hi, today's vlog brought to you by my cellar uh, or down here because I couldn't help myself and ordered some potatoes. They're a mix of white, red, and I forget if they call themselves blue or purple. They're not sweet. They're just regular starchy potatoes. Um, here they are. They had eyes, but they needed chitting, so I stuck them down here. It's kind of bright. It's a bit cooler than outside. Some of them look like they're starting a little bit. Those eyes have started sprouting. These blue or purple ones, though, I don't really see anything on them yet. So hopefully they start up soon. And I stuck one of my Yukon Golds that still hadn't started, but I might as well try while I'm at it from my fridge in here, too. It's this one. Um, it sort of looked like it wanted to have some eyes on it, so we'll see how it goes. I think I'm going to stick all of these into the ground hole except for the long one here because I think I'm going to cut it in half. Uh, I've never, well, I've done potatoes once. I don't remember how it happened because I want to say it was good 20 years ago. <laughs> So I don't remember if anything sprouted. I remember that I put them in little mounds because that's how I always saw them. But I didn't realize that you start mounding them up after you have them in the ground to make more potatoes grow further up the stalk. Um, anyway, I, I read on the internet that if you cut them, you want to maybe uh, toss them in a brown bag full of sulfur on that cut end so it doesn't get any sort of strange molds or funguses on it and I'm glad that I still have a little container of sulfur from when I bought it last year when I had all sorts of white and yellow fuzzies on my uh, pygmy sundew pots. So um, the only problem is a paper bag. Uh, I might just sprinkle the sulfur on by hand. Um, so I also don't have another planter. And I was watching on the internet, and apparently a box will do. So, I don't know if I told you, but I ordered some hoses. Two 100-foot hoses from Home Depot. Um, they were ridiculously heavy. They felt like they were going to throw my back out. And also, they called themselves No Kink. But they were the worst piece of garbage I've used ever and every single time I moved the hose even an inch I had to go find where the kink was because the water would stop going. Um, we're leaving my cellar. So, oh those are fine there. So, get back Georgie. So, uh, I went to go return them at Home Depot. I ordered something similarly cheap from Amazon to just recycle those funds because I feel poor after paying for all this stuff. Um, and they came in a heavy duty box because they were so heavy. And I just set that up in the backyard. I put some mulch around it. I put it on a piece of hardware cloth. Um, We'll see how it goes. So I filled it with a couple inches of dirt, but not all the way because I'm waiting for the potatoes. So I'll, I'll um, put some fancy fertilized potting mix like miracle Grow stuff around the potatoes when I put them in there. So far it's just Scott's topsoil. And I think I'll fill most of the rest of it in with Scott's topsoil and maybe mix in some uh, coffee grounds. And if my compost is finally compost, I'll mix some of that in. I've been adding to it since January, and it's still whole pieces of everything that I stuck in there. So I don't know what I've been doing wrong. Maybe not enough green matter. So whenever I've ripped up weeds. So I ripped up a lot of crabgrass when I went through and planted all of the sunflowers two days ago. <laughs> Let me show you the backyard. So... Uh, I put sunflowers around the sides of the backyard and then also along the fence in the front yard. So I'm going to say that I planted about 100 sunflowers. Most of them haven't gotten ripped up, but
by the squirrels. I don't know if you can see them, but it's all the the divots along the fence, all those circles. Took my little hoe and I dug out holes and I mixed the Scots topsoil with the local horrible clay and planted out those sunflowers. So I don't know if you can see that there's a cardboard box in where the garden is. So that's where I'm going to be planting the potatoes. Uh, the plants in here, all the nepenthes are overgrown as usual. This is the Saboyanensis by Trismatiensis that I went through and tried to pollinate. We'll see if it sticks this time. It didn't late last year when it bloomed. There's diatomaceous earth all over everything in my continuing fight with the ants. Uh, I pruned some dead leaves off in the past week. Look at those nice platy kyla pictures. Um, so I did three rounds of seedlings in these things for myself. So I had the veggies first and then all those sunflowers that I just planted. I'm gonna say there were 100 to 150 of them and I also planted some extra seeds of the teddy bear sunflowers because I hadn't started those early. And I've also replaced like the 10 that I'm assuming the squirrels ripped up with just straight up seeds in the yard. Um, and now I am starting all sorts of pretty flowers. So some of them have finally started coming up. I'm excited. And then um, I am starting some veggie seeds for a friend further up north, but actually, strangely enough, in the same agricultural zone. So I think her first frosted date is maybe a week ahead of mine. And true, it's kind of late to plant, but up there, it's going to be in the mid 40s in a week again. So this year's growing season is really strange. Hopefully it stays warmer for longer at the tail end because a lot of people's things, um, we had a frost. Like it actually was a good 31, 32 Fahrenheit at night, a week or two after the predicted last frost date. So I think a lot of people's things died. And also I got my peppers, eggplants, and corn out, I want to say last Thursday, but next weekend on Sunday night, it's supposed to be maybe 51 overnight, which I might be putting some sheets of bubble wrap or something over those peppers, eggplants, and corn that I just put in. It's, but they had to go out already. Some of them were still in these little starter plugs that are all of an inch big, and they were like six inch tall pepper plants, which... It wasn't working anymore and had I transplanted them, transplanting for just a week in a bigger pot I figure would be more stress on a plant than I really wanted to give it but then peppers being in 50 degrees and eggplants being in 50 degrees isn't the best either so not quite sure what I'm gonna do hopefully because the forecast keeps moving it'll shift again and it'll be warmer um, so the reason that I got those sunflowers in is it was supposed to be raining all of last week. It only rained for like a couple of hours tops between Friday morning and Saturday morning. So the ground was sort of soft enough to get through it. Supposedly it's supposed to thunderstorm and really rain this upcoming Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I'm hoping that actually happens this time and it doesn't disappear again because I need the ground to be softer in order to dig up the area behind the driveway in order to put those flowers that are up here in. 